Good morning. It is Monday morning. Time for some Motivational Monday. My name is Christopher Donnell. I'm the pastor here at Urbana United Methodist Church, where we uh, are looking to grow God's kingdom and to spread the gospel, the good news that Jesus has come and he brings freedom for, for everyone. And um, as I, I say that freedom for everyone, we can't help but notice uh, in our communities, in our world, um, everyone uh, doesn't always seem to be on the same page about things. And um, uh, as recent events have unfolded in our, our little city, city of Springfield, Ohio, that has been catapulted into the, the national uh, news headlines over the past couple weeks, I can't help but just feel saddened by the whole thing. Uh, my heart really is just broken. Um, it's upsetting and unsettling how how a, a real problem has been handled and is being talked about. And um, I, I love Springfield. I mean, we've we're not from this side of the the state. Uh, we've been here 15 years now. Uh, we love love this area. We grew up on the east side of Columbus. Grew up off of Hamilton Road. Uh, Hamilton Road has all kinds of problems. Uh, then we grew up in uh, near Pataskill and Pickerington. And uh, that place, those places have all kinds of, of issues as well. But uh, Springfield's been interesting being out here in Urbana. Uh, it's definitely the closest uh, city to us, if you will. It's not the biggest city, but it is a city. And uh, it's where we shop, eat, play. We, uh, we love what has been happening to the downtown area. There are great restaurants, great places to hang out, see music. Um, I went to Clark State there. Um, for a number of years graduated. I'm an alumni, Eagle, all right. Uh, that's where I got my graphic design degree. And um, it's it, we love the parks, we love, uh, love the, the, the nature preserves, uh, we love um, the, the convenient shopping. Uh, although we now have an Aldi in Urbana, so we don't have to go to Springfield as much. But the reality is it's, it's been a great asset to, to our family, just having a, a place close by to, to play, to eat great food, uh, and to um, enjoy, enjoy each other's company. And uh, it's just been really saddened to hear how uh, the, the problem, the, the issue with the, the migration population moving into Springfield has, has just now surfaced to this kind of ugly battle that's happening. Now, uh, none of this happened overnight. Uh, this has been a, a thing that's been happening for a while now. Uh, there are a lot of um, immigration issues going on there, and there's going to be resource problems, absolutely. Um, but I know a few community leaders who have been tackling this 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 problem head on for years now. Um, I've interviewed Pastor Carl Ruby from Central Christian Church on Motivational Monday multiple times about his work down in Springfield. And, and four years ago, we were talking about how they were teaching uh, English as a second language to Haitians even then. Um, and so seeing how um, how this, this whole situation has been brought to the light uh, now um, and saying that there's just such this terrible place called Springfield, Ohio, feels like a smack in the face to all the people who have been doing God's work there for a long time. Are there real issues at hand? Yeah. Are there, is the, is the city under resource? Absolutely. Uh, do they need more help? Yes. Um, but the things that are being talked about and the way they are being talked about, about people, and just let me remind you, people were created in God's image. Uh, it's just, is unsettling to me. It breaks my heart. Um, now that does not excuse, um, poor behavior. doesn't excuse, uh, people not doing the right thing. Um, it doesn't excuse us for not helping people, uh, assimilate and do the right thing. Again, real problems, real issues. But my perspective that I'm coming at from today is one that has chosen to follow Jesus. I've tried to give my whole life to Jesus, follow him to do his will, to love like him, lead like him, to uh, point people uh, to to the cross that Jesus hung on, but also the empty tomb that he walked out of. And um, it matters now, maybe more than ever in our culture, how we respond uh, to this stuff. Uh, we could either get angry or frustrated as we watch news headlines or read tweets and dismiss um, an entire population, dismiss an entire city that's been uh, working through its teeth and grit to, to pull itself out of the ashes for a long time, or we could say, how can we help wash 
uh, our neighbor's feet? How can we help? How can we bring relief to this situation? Um, and I would say, being in Urbana, we're not in the middle of that. Uh, we can at least help by how we're having dialogue with uh, those around us. Uh, that's the first thing is um, wait a couple weeks before you read a headline, before you get angry or upset about it. Um, there's probably an ounce of truth in, truth in about everything, um, sometimes more, sometimes less. But usually you find out more of the truth uh, many hours past the original thing has happened. Um, that's why I'm just now like trying to get my thoughts together after this thing has happened two weeks ago. I don't want to ever have a knee-jerk reaction to any situation. And so this is no different. Um, but I will say, as Jesus followers, the way we talk about the problems in our country, in our world, the way we address them, um, it matters. And, and Jesus has called us to a higher standard. This is not a left or right Democrat or Republic issue. Uh, this is a kingdom issue. How do we walk as children of God uh, to advance God's kingdom, to bring more people into heaven, less people in hell, and to, uh, to bring that good news that he has come to set us free? That's our mission. That's our goal. That's, that's what we're here for. Uh, if it's anything other than that, we're starting to not follow Jesus and we're starting to follow culture, whether again, it's the left or the right. And that's not where we want to find ourselves in this dire hour where again, people are under attack. A city is under attack, uh, even just by their reputation. Um, I, I feel bad for, for those folks who own homes down there. We have many people who, who live in Springfield who come to our church and, and, um, after the election's over, those people are still going to live there. Um, the problems will still exist. And newsflash, Springfield has had problems for a long time, just like most communities do. Um, and so we don't need our, our problems highlighted. We need answers and solutions brought to the table with real people. And again, real people have been doing God's work down there for a long, long time. There are lots of organizations, lots of people who have been witnessing this happen and their their knee-jerk reaction was what can we do about it not how can we get angry or mad about it um i, I have a good friend kathy stoffer uh, who used to be the youth pastor at um, first baptist church here in urbana and uh, in the recent years she moved uh down to a role down at east high nazarene um down in springfield and uh in the last year a year ago they they, they launched a haitian church service again because they saw the need and how do we spread the gospel to these these folks who are now here part of our community um whether people want them there or not they're here um so how do we how do we do deal with that um you can't just wish problems away the people of god are called to action and uh, when I was reading in Isaiah, and I actually used this on my message on Sunday, I was pretty encouraged by um, the, the prophet's words. And these are the words that actually Jesus read um, as he launched himself into uh, full-time ministry. When he went to the temple um, and he, uh, he, he presented himself as, as more than just this, this carpenter. He is now teacher. He's going to be rabbi. Uh, he's going to be uh, our master. And he, he opens the scrolls of Isaiah and he reads from Isaiah 61. And, and maybe you know that scripture or not, but I'm actually going to read it from the message translation today. Uh, we've read it a few times during our series uh, in the NIV, but I, I love how Isaiah 61, 1 through 4 in the message says this. And again, Jesus reiterates these words uh, in the gospel. So uh, picture Jesus reading this, also God's heart throughout the Old Testament, uh, prophesying that the promise of hope is coming. Verse 1, the Spirit of God, the Master, is on me because God anointed me. He sent me to preach good news to the poor, heal the heartbroken, announce freedom to all captives, pardon for all prisoners. God sent me to announce the year of his grace, a celebration of God's destruction of our enemies, and to comfort all who mourn to care for the needs of all who mourn in Zion, to give them banquets of roses instead of ashes, messages of joy instead of news of doom, a praising heart instead of a languid spirit. Rename them oaks of righteousness planted by a God to display his glory. They'll, re be, they'll rebuild the old ruins, raise a new city out of the wreckage. They'll start over on the ruined cities, take the rubble left behind and make it new. And I really want to highlight that last that last couple lines. They'll re they'll rebuild the old ruins, raise a new city out of the wreckage. They'll start over on the ruined cities, take the rubble left behind, and make it new. 
Springfield's already been doing that for years. They've been taking the rubble, the ashes. I mean, they lost so many things to industry leaving and, and poverty and, 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 and uh, the economy uh, crashing there. And yet they rebuilt. And so the promise that God is calling us to today um, is that he will rebuild his city. He will rebuild Jerusalem. He will bring the new kingdom come on the old ashes. So whatever feels broken and hopeless and, and destroyed right now, God will eventually raise back up out of the ashes and rebuild into his glorious new kingdom. So whatever uh, is on your headline news this week is a temporary moment in time where we get to respond as Jesus followers, either like Jesus or like the world. So I invite you, even in Urbana, Champaign County, whether you're across the country, respond at least in your dialogue that is Jesus-centered, kingdom-focused, and bringing the hope of the good news. Have a great week.